You know, I stopped for a minute when I clicked on record and normally I walk out and sit down and start reading devotionals, but when I looked at the computer screen and I saw the camera angle and I noticed the steam rising off the coffee and I thought, wow, look at this picture. Look at the way and how peaceful it appears to be. Isn't that what our day, what our life, what we ought to be? A nice, beautiful, wonderful day the Lord has made. A day that He has caused to come into being and existence for us. A day that He has said that I will be with them and I will be their God and I will be in the midst of them and they shall be my people and I will walk with them, and I will talk with them, and I will reveal to them wonders that they never knew existed. Is your day peaceful today? Mine is. I have all these concerns that can't be met in any other way except God move in His way. And so, when I find those things that work that way, I know because of the experience I've had with Him, because of the words that He shared with me, because of the love that He has for me, that all I can do is trust and obey. Because you see, worry and anxiety and fears never accomplished anything. But it did teach you, has it not, as it taught me, that in order to trust, there must be that situation and circumstance that come up in your life to see if you do trust. And so when you take the time sometimes to just sit back from the situation of your life, from the circumstances of your fears, from the anxieties or worries that you think are near, and you just take a good look at this cup of coffee and the steam coming off, or the quiet calm that permeates the place that you decide to meet with God today in the morning, then be still for a moment. Let go of what you're thinking about. Listen carefully. <clears throat> Listen carefully to what God would say to you, because there's never a reason to panic, but there's always a reason for praise. And if you do get still and know that he is God, then the peace that passes all understanding will not only rule your heart and mind, it will comfort you in times of trial. <clears throat> in daily life, <clears throat> walk in the newness of life. As you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. You have not so learned of Christ or of Jesus. If so be that you have heard of him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It has been said that when you see Jesus, you'll never be the same. When you know Jesus, you'll never be the same. When you walk with Jesus, you'll never be the same. Has today found you the same as yesterday? Can I make a suggestion? Get along with Jesus for a few minutes. You won't be the same. 
For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part, is often a marriage vow. But the vow that God has said is that on the very palms of his hand, he has inscribed you. And if you recognize that that's in blood, you know that Jesus will never forsake you nor leave you. Thy will be done. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Not as I will, but thou wilt. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. We know not what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You know not what you ask. He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. These things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. But I would have you without carefulness. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. God knows what I need more than what I want. God knows what I want more than I need. When I accept the fact that God knows me better than I know myself, then I can turn my prayer, my cares, my sharing in conversation with him daily, my love for him in an intimate and personal way, my desire to see him more and more each day conforming me into his image, my hope of being called to be exactly like him someday, that God would know that what his will is, I prefer over and above anything that I may ask or say, and that we don't always have to say, and I don't always cry out to God and say, thy will be done, but I know that I would rather have God in control than me to ever determine the direction I should go. So I always say to God each and every day, lead me in the way that I should go and stop me from going where you don't want me to be. For God, to thee do I lift up my soul and give me that peace that I may know that I walk with God today and I would not be found astray. So every day and every way I ask, O oh God, that you would do your will to be done unto me, to be done in me, to be done through me, that you might be the God who lives in me. I hope that's your prayer. I know it's mine.